I decided to get a little nostalgic for my very first video of 2022. Look at these twinkly lights. Are we back in 2012? Hi guys, happy new year. I hope you're all doing well. It feels so weird to be filming right now. I feel very out of practice and like weirdly shy in front of the camera because I have not filmed a video in close to three weeks. Um, I did take a little holiday break. And of course my first video back had to be the best of beauty for 2021. I decided that instead of going through absolutely every single one of the products that I loved in 2021, I would instead rank my top three in every single category. As a little side note, I also wanted to include a little giveaway in today's video just to thank you guys for your support and love in 2021. And I will talk a little bit more about that at the end of the video, just so we don't take up too much time, but just know that there is a giveaway in this video. And also because this is the very first video of the year, I would love to get some of your feedback in the comments. I would love to just know what you guys want to see from me most this year. Um, be as specific as you like, whether that's specific types of lifestyle, makeup, fashion videos, whatever it is, just let me know because I mean, I make these videos for you and I wanna know what you guys wanna see. So I'm excited to hear what you guys have to say, but without further ado, we have a lot of products to talk about, so let's get into it. So let's talk base makeup. The top three skin tint slash foundations that I've used throughout the year were super obvious for me when I was putting together this list. This was the very first thing that I filled out because I didn't even need to think twice at what my most loved and most used foundations and skin tints were this year. There's one product that I feel like pops up over and over again in my favorites, and this is a product that I I constantly go back to year after year. It's probably one of the most long-standing makeup products in my collection, and it's the MAC Face and Body. This is one of my favorites because it truly looks like skin. And I know that's something that is said often, especially when it's come to skin tints, but this is probably the most skin-like foundation that I think I've really ever tried. Like, it's pretty much undetectable on the face, which is why I personally love it, especially for day to day. And it's a product that I just always need to have in my collection. So I had to include it as probably one of the very, very top favorite base products ever really. Another skin tint that I really love this year is the Fenty Eavesdrop Blurring Skin Tint. The blurring quality that the skin tint has is what I love so much about it and what I find kind of separates it from a lot of other skin tints because most other skin tints don't really have this kind of soft matte blurring finish. It's a skin tint, so it's not super full coverage, but this does have some pretty solid coverage to it. I do find that this covers up my redness very, very easily, but because it is a skin tint, it's a very lightweight texture as well, which I find is a really interesting combination with that blurring aspect of this product. Even though it is more of like a soft matte finish, I don't find it really like clings to my dry patches. Although I have heard from other dry skin people out there that they do not like this product at all because it does cling to their dry patches. So obviously with all products pretty much to each their own. I also just don't use this in the winter time when my skin is really, really super dry because I just don't find it meshes well with it. But in the spring and summer, it's actually one of my favorites because it is that soft matte finish. I find that it's so much more long wearing than other foundations because it just kind of stays on my skin. It doesn't slip and slide around. That's why I like this and that's why it was definitely one of my favorites this year. My third favorite foundation of the year is 100% the LYS Triple Fix Serum Foundation. This really is the full coverage foundation of my dreams. There's a couple full coverage foundations that I really fell in love with this year, but this one really sticks out from the bunch because it just hits all of the boxes for me. Like you guys know, or maybe you don't, I have dry skin and so full coverage foundations can sometimes be a little bit tricky for me. Like I'm really, really picky with how they look because they can often look overly heavy or too drying because of my dry skin. But this is such, such a hydrating foundation and it's hydrating also without being too glowy, which is a huge problem that I find that I have with full coverage glowy foundations. Like they will look great, but after about an hour, they'll start to look heavy as well because they're almost too glowy. I really do find that this is kind of like perfectly balanced. This is also one of my favorite um, wearing foundations because I find that it wears really, 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 really well throughout the day, like for long periods of time. Again, with full coverage foundations, I'll often have the issue where they'll start to kind of settle by the end of the day and I'll have like cakey looking smile lines or it'll just look 
heavier than it did when I applied it. This truly, at least for me, looks exactly as it did when I first applied it at the end of the day when I go in to take it off. And that in combination with the hydration and the natural finish and the coverage is what makes this probably one of my favorite foundations that I've ever tried. It's so good. Oh, by the way, if you're wondering what shades I use for all of these, the MAC Base and Body I use N3, the Fenty Eavesdrop I use number four, and the LYS I use MN3. So those are my top three foundations. Now let's get into concealers. This category was also very easy for me to choose because again, I'm kind of a creature of habit when I find certain things that just work really well for me, I just don't stop using them. And so these three concealers were really my most used throughout the year and my most loved. If you watch my videos, you will have definitely seen the NARS Soft Matte Concealer multiple times throughout the entire year. And even before this year, like this has been in my life for a very long time, but I really feel like this year, this product really shined more than ever for me. <laughs> this formula I find is actually quite unique. I haven't really tried any other concealer that's really come close to it. If you guys know of any good dupes for the NARS Soft Matte, let me know in the comments. I, I don't really know of any off the top of my head. So this is definitely a matte formula, but this is not drying in the slightest. A lot of matte concealers can be very thick and kind of sticky and putty-like. NARS has somehow figured out a way to formulate a matte concealer that is very, 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 very airy and lightweight. And because there's no glow to it, it's pretty much undetectable. So it's really good for concealing um, blemishes on the face. And it's one of my favorite concealers to do that with. Now I have a lot of concealers that I kind of cycle between, especially for day to day, but one that I always go back to and that I repurchase constantly is the Elia True Skin Serum. Not that it really matters, but this is what I'm wearing underneath my eyes today. It's not like you could really see it. That's kind of the whole point of concealer. What I really like a lot about this concealer is I find that I'm able to use this on my more natural days and I'm also able to use this on my more full coverage days. There's some concealers that I find I can only really use on my more full coverage days or on my more natural days and not necessarily both because I just don't find that the coverage or finish will match the rest of my face. And I always like to make sure there's some consistency in the coverage on my face. And this is one of the few concealers that I feel gives me the perfect amount of coverage that I'm able to use this on my more full coverage days. But it also is natural enough that it still looks great even if I'm not wearing any foundation on my face. It doesn't crease, it's hydrating, and it just works. So what more can you want from a concealer? The Dior Forever Skin Correct is another one of my absolute favorite concealers, especially for when I want something more full coverage. This is what I go to. When applied underneath the eyes, it almost like envelops the under eyes and sits on top of the lines that are there. And so it kind of gives this really beautiful perfected look to the under eyes. And that's why I love it for my more full coverage days when I really do want like a very smooth looking, fully blanked out under eye. This is gorgeous. Okay, let's talk face powder. And I'm laughing because do I even need this category? I think you guys know pretty well um, what my favorite face powder was of 2021. And this was also the only category that I could not come up with three products for everything else, no problem doing so. But for powders, there was really only two powders that I used this year and loved. And I didn't wanna just add a third just to add it. So we only have two for this category. And what are they? Say it with me, everybody. Kosas Cloud Set, Charlotte Tilbury Flawless Finish Powder. For those of you who are stumbling upon this video who just don't know me, <laughs> I am very, very picky when it comes to my powders. And when I find a powder, that works for me, I really stick with it because there's not a lot of powders that do. I have dry skin, dry skin, plus powders. They don't always, they don't always get along. You know what I'm saying? So the powders that do play well with my skin, I keep them very close to my heart. And the one powder that really like took it over the top for me that really was one of the best powders that I think I've ever tried was the Kosas Cloud Set. And what's so ironic and ridiculous is I don't even have my Kosas Cloud Set Powder here with me. It is my most spoken about product of the year probably, and I can't find it anywhere. So that's super annoying and I'm sorry about that, but I'll put a photo right over here so you can see what it looks like in case you don't know. What I love so much about this powder is the blurring effect that it has. I find that for me at least, the powders that give that softly blurred effect are typically loose powders that sit a little bit heavier on the skin. And I've never really found that so much so with a pressed powder that's as lightweight as this. So that's why 
why I love this so much and that's why it works so well for me and that's why I can't shut the up about it. Another powder that I really do love, I've been using this guy for years, is the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Finish Skin Perfecting Micro Powder. This was like the Kosas Cloud Set before the Kosas Cloud Set for me. Like this was my favorite pressed powder. It does blur the skin. It's not heavy at all and it just works really well. I do feel that the Kosas Cloud Set is a little bit more lightweight than this. It's still a really gorgeous powder and I still use this all the time. So that's it for all of my favorite base products. Now let's jump into some of my favorite cheek products. So starting off first with bronzing products. So three of my favorite bronzers from the year are all cream bronzers. Creams really just dominated most of my cheek products this year. I, I definitely use powders, but creams as they have been for the last, I think two, three years for me, are just right at the top. I, I, I love me a cream product. So the first cream bronzer that is my favorite is my favorite everyday cream bronzer. And yes, I do have specific types of cream bronzers that I like to use depending on uh, the type of look that I wanna get. And the Say Cream Bronzer in medium bronze is definitely my favorite for day to day. So the reason why I love this one specifically for day to day is really just because it's so easy to use. This really just melts into the skin pretty much seamlessly, especially when you wanna get ready quickly. It's great to have a product that's just super easy to use and I find this one to be just that. I also really like the fact that this isn't like very, very, very pigmented and over the top because that also just adds to its ease of use. I love the color of this as well. It's a beautiful bronzer color for my skin tone and it just works great. Now it's really beautiful about cream bronzers and just creams in general. They do lean more on the natural side and I think that's why a lot of people do like them. And creams are often more so associated with more natural makeup, but that also doesn't mean that you can't use creams for your more full glam makeup looks. Um, there are specific creams that I like to use for those types of looks and the Makeup by Mario. The Soft Sculpt Shaping Stick is one of my favorites for my more full glam looks. Compared to the Say bronzer, this is definitely much more pigmented, much more intense, whereas this guy has a little bit more sheerness to it, so it's just, easier to use in that way. This has a lot of pigment. So if you want those benefits of a cream, if you want something that looks like it's a part of the skin and, and it's natural, but you still want that pop of pigment and that pop of color when it comes to your bronzer or your blush, try and find a product that does have that intensity and you'll get the best of both worlds. And that's why I love the Makeup by Mario Cream Stick because it is intense but it blends beautifully and it still looks very natural once it is actually blended out. Now the M Cosmetics So Soft bronzers kind of land right in between uh, the Makeup by Mario bronzer and the Save. If you just wanted to get one cream bronzing product, this would honestly be the one that I would recommend because I feel like you could very easily get both looks with this type of product. You could get something more sheared out and more appropriate for day to day, but you could also build this up very easily by just kind of layering it. They do also have really great shades in this lineup as well. I use the shade Summer and that's what it looks like. Okay, let's talk blushes now. Again, all of my blushes are creams. This was kind of unexpected because I didn't really think that I would love this as much as I did, but this very quickly became one of my go-to day-to-day blushes. This is the Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk Lip and Cheek Glow in the shade Color of Passion. This is also typically not a shade that I go to when it comes to my blushes and I feel like this particular blush really opened up my eyes to this color category, but I find that this deeper berry shade has been so beautiful to wear because it really gives the most natural flush to the cheeks because naturally this is very close to what my cheeks actually become when I get embarrassed or flushed or whatever, especially on no makeup makeup days or even honestly full glam. This has been like one of my go-to colors because it just looks so gorgeous and natural. Another M Cosmetics product here, I really just love the So Soft collection. I find that the colors in this collection are very kind of unlike the typical blush color launch that we see over and over again, which was nice to see. This color in particular called Passion was one of my favorites. I just found it to be pretty unique. It's kind of like a burnt orange color. It's very, very intense. I have to admit that I need to be pretty careful when applying this because it can get a little bit crazy since I am on the fairer side, especially when I am more tan. This color is so gorgeous. 
I mean, it looks crazy even when I blend it out on my hand, but I promise you, if you use like a very, very small amount, it just gives the most amazing like burnt orange flush to the cheeks and probably the newest cheek favorite of mine. Um, but I had to mention it because I have not been able to stop using them, have been the Rose Ink Lip and Cheek Colors. This shade in particular, Fox Love, has been my go-to since I discovered it. That's why even though these are newer in my life, I still felt like I had to mention it because I just have not been able to stop using them. They really are some of the best like creams that I've tried in 2021. I feel like this is a very balanced cream blush formula. It's not too matte, it's not too glowy, and it's not just this shade that I like. Every shade that I've tried from this collection, I really have adored. And yeah, this does look like a toilet, but I don't care. <laughs> I don't care at all. So let's quickly talk about highlighters. I don't know why, but for whatever reason, I kind of phased out highlighting for myself a little bit this year. I feel like it's because I use so many cream um, bronzers and blushes that give me a glow because they're creams. I don't always feel that it's necessary for me to go in with a highlighter. However, when I do go in with a highlighter, I always ask myself why I don't do it more often because I just love the way it looks so much. Um, so I can't really say that I was like, dying for highlighters in 2021, but when I have been applying them, these were the three that I went towards the most because they're the exact look that I like in a highlighter, which is something that's very natural looking that really just blends into the skin and looks like you are naturally glowing. These give me exactly that effect. Kind of gonna speak about all three of them in the same breath because honestly, they do all the exact same thing for me. They just have very subtle differences in their formulas. So the first one is the Iconic London Radiance Booster. I actually have this one in a couple different shades. I have one that's closer to my skin tone and ones that are a little bit more on like the tanner side that I actually like mixing in with my foundation to kind of give my foundation a boost of bronze <laughs> and also a little bit of like a boost of glow. And so this is the tan shade that I like to use. It's called Tan Glow. And this is the one that I like to mix in with my foundations. So that's that. I also have the Lisa Eldridge Seamless Skin Elevated Glow. Uh, this one I feel is the most subtle of the three over here. It's also a little bit more kind of serum-like compared to the other two, which are much creamier. So it's a little bit more lightweight and I also wouldn't mix this one in with my foundation. I would pretty much just apply this pinpointed as a cheek highlighter and it really just gives the most natural stunning glow. Look at that, so pretty. And then last but not least, of course, we have the Auric Glow Lust Radiant Luminizer. Very similar in the way that I use the Iconic London Radiance Booster. Same way I would use the Auric Glow Lust. It's a beautiful product. So now let's move from the face onto Z eyes um, and let's talk about my three favorite eye products from 2021. This was also like super easy for me to choose because these three products really just stood out to me quite a bit this year. The first one is another one that I fell so deeply and ridiculously in love with, and it's Kosas Globe. And can I just say, I had a mini heart attack a couple weeks ago when I saw that Kosas was discontinuing this particular formula um, of their 10 second eyeshadow along with Globe. I thought that my relationship with Globe was over forever and I was pretty much devastated. Don't you worry in, in case you were just as worried as I was. Cause I saw on the Sephora website that Kosas is actually reformulating their 10 second eyeshadows and Globe has been renamed to Blaze. So it still exists. Thank goodness <laughs> because I was, I was upset. I was ready to write a letter, but I'm just going to talk about the formula that I do know and love and that's this right over here. For me, this is just my perfect golden eyeshadow. You know when you find that shade that just works perfectly for you, it's like not too gold, it's not too bronze, it's not too copper. That's what Globe was for me. And then on top of the perfect color is the shimmer. The shimmer is stunning, you guys. It's so sparkly, it makes your eyes just glitter and glimmer. It's kind of like a liquidy formula that sets down and it does last really well, I find, throughout the entire day. It doesn't go anywhere, it doesn't drop on the face, which is great. That's why Glow really was my favorite like golden eyeshadow this year. Another one of my most used products this year have definitely been the Laura Mercier Caviar Sticks. This product, I feel like, was revived <laughs> in 2021 for me. They're essentially cream eyeshadow sticks and I really have grown a big appreciation for cream eyeshadow sticks because they're just so easy. Like the amount of times that I've actually taken out powder eyeshadow and done like an entire powdered eyeshadow look, 
maybe five throughout the entire year. Now, don't get me wrong, I love me my powder eyeshadow, but this year I really just fully embraced the ease of cream eyeshadow. This guy over here is Coco, which is actually one of my favorites. It's just a really, really deep dark brown um, shade. It's not anything too crazy or exciting, but it's a great, very, very rich brown. And I actually love applying this as eyeliner. It works really great and it does not move. Another M Cosmetics product that I really just totally fell in love with this year are the Cosmic Pearl Dewy Eyeshadows. If you like eyeshadows that give your lids kind of like this wet, glossy effect, you need to try these. They are so good and they do exactly that. The formula is really interesting on these because they're not a powder, but they're not a cream. It's kind of like a hybrid between the two. And because of this texture, there's no fallout. There's no chunkiness to it. It just glides on the lids. It doesn't go anywhere. And to have such a reflective and intense eyeshadow that is that, that easy to use, is a dream for me. So staying within the eye category, let's talk about my three favorite mascaras from the year. Similar to my Kosas Cloud set, one of my most used mascaras of the year is not here. I don't know where it went. I can't find it anywhere. I, I was searching for both of those products for so long before starting this video. I was like, you know what? I'll just show a picture. You guys know what this product looks like anyway, because it's the Benefit Roller Lash. It's been around for such a long time. And it's also another product that I've mentioned on my channel multiple times. I fall in love with a lot of new products this year, but I have also kind of rediscovered those older products that I used to love and adore, and I've just fallen back in love with them again. And the Benefit Roller Lash is one of those products for me. It's like an oldie but a goodie. It's an OG favorite of mine, and it's just so good. It's one of the very few mascaras that really curls my lashes kind of like nothing else. Like I am able to get such a lifted, defined look with this mascara without needing to use an eyelash curler. So it really just does everything for my lashes. It lengthens, it curls, it volumizes, and it doesn't clump, and it also lasts. It hits all the boxes for me, and that's why I love it and continue to use it. My second favorite mascara is another M Cosmetics product. It is the M Cosmetics Pick Me Up. This is really a favorite of mine because it's a tubing mascara, and I really enjoy tubing mascaras on the days that I just don't wanna have to worry about my mascara. You know those days where you're like, okay, it's so hot outside that no matter what mascara I put on, it's going to smudge. You don't have to worry about that when it comes to a tube of mascara because you can only remove them with water. And even when they do come off with water, they come off in clumps. So you're never going to get raccoon eyes. You're never, you're never going to get smudging. And that's what makes tube of mascara so great to me. Um, and so it's been one of my go-tos for every day when I kind of just want that ease and that peace of mind as well. A mascara that really surprised me this year that I also just could not stop using after I discovered it was the MAC Magic Extensions. I don't think I had ever tried a mascara from MAC that I actually like fell in love with or like really, really, really enjoyed. Most of the mascaras that I've tried from MAC were kind of just okay. This though is incredible. It's called Magic Extensions because it literally gives you insanely long lashes. It really does build up your lashes to be so super intense. This has been like my drama mascara favorite. Okay, let's talk about my three favorite brow products. This again is also gonna be pretty obvious if you have been following along my channel. So I have discovered a new category of brow product this year that I have really enjoyed and it's called brow cream. <laughs> brow cream is essentially a brow gel like product that is typically applied with a very, very small spoolie, like these guys, like teeny, teeny, tiny little spoolies. And when you run this product through your brows, it will set them in place, but it will also fill it in at the same time. It is the lazy person's dream. Every time I talk about this, that's what I say, because it's just the truth. My favorite has been the M Cosmetics Brow Cream. I like this because I find that it's really easy to use. And then another one that I've been really liking is the Makeup Forever Aqua Resist Brow Fixer. I do feel like this isn't as quite easy to use, as the M Cosmetics one. I do feel like this is a little bit more intense in pigment, but that's kind of why I like it sometimes when I do want a little bit more intensity to my brows. I like to go towards this one. Then for my brow gel, I've been really enjoying this one. This is the Kosas Air Brow, and I use the shade Soft Brown. This is nice when I want a softly defined brow. I don't want anything too intense because the brow creams can definitely be a little bit more in like the filled in intense side. When I just wanna like lightly tint my brows and just set them in place, this has been the brow gel that I've been using. It's not the most like insane hold when it comes to a brow gel, and it's also not the most insane like color 
application when it comes to a brow product, but that's kind of why I like it. And that's why this has been like a staple in my collection because it just does enough. All right, now let's enter the lip category. So let's start off first with lip liners. My number one most used lip liner this year, by far, without even having to think twice, has been the M Cosmetics Soft Blur Lip Liner in the shade Kitten. This has been my go-to neutral nude lip liner and I pretty much wear this with almost everything whether it's a color like what I'm wearing right now like the soft orange shade or it's a nude or it's even like a dark red I will often go for this lip liner even if it doesn't necessarily match because this is like my perfect lip liner shade where it really defines my lips in a not too obvious way because it's maybe just like a shade or two darker than my actual lip color. And so I find that it just very naturally contours my lips. And I also love how creamy this formula is. Then we have my Makeup Forever Anywhere Caffeine. I, this is another product that I've been using for years. I'm very loyal to the products that like take a little piece of my heart. I like this for a lot of the same reasons as to why I like Kitten. I feel like they share a lot of the same qualities. The formulas are very different. I do prefer the M Cosmetics formula over this guy but it is still a nice formula. It, it glides on easily. It lasts really well. I just find that the M Cosmetics one is just creamier and so it applies a little bit nicer in my opinion. The color of this is still one of my favorites and it's one of the most versatile that I have in my collection. I also really love this guy from Charlotte Tilbury, the Lip Cheat in Pillow Talk 2 Medium. This is pretty much the same idea as the other two lip liners. It's just a little bit of a different tone, whereas these two are more on like the brownier side. The Pillow Talk Medium has more of those like pinkier undertones to it. So I don't find that this goes with everything, but it definitely goes with a lot of my neutral shades that I tend to be drawn towards. Now let's talk lipstick. My number one favorite lipstick this year is another really old favorite of mine that I kind of rediscovered and just was not able to stop using and it's MAC Patisserie. I kind of just pulled this out of my collection one day and I just never put it back. It's just one of my favorite neutral shades because it's not too much in any direction. It's not too peach or pink or brown. Um, and it's also not too light or too dark. It's just such a great color and paired with um, the M Cosmetics Kitten has been my go-to lip combo. I honestly don't don't even know if they make patisserie anymore. Last time I tried to look it up, I wasn't able to find it, which is concerning to me. And I hope that's really not the case because I don't know what I'm gonna do when I run out of this. It's gonna be upsetting. One of my favorite new formulas that I discovered this year have been the NARS, the Soft Matte Tinted Lip Balms. And this one is in the shade Whiplash. Whenever I think of a matte lip product, I think of something that's more on the drying side. This is super interesting because it combines the feel of a lip balm with the look of a matte lipstick. So this is not drying at all. It, in fact, it's super, super, super lightweight. You can barely even feel it. It actually feels hydrating on the lips, but you get, I wouldn't say completely flat matte, but a very flattering soft matte finish. I was really impressed when I tried this. The last lipstick product that I wanted to mention is the M Cosmetics Lip Cushion Tinted Lip Luminizer. If you like those lipsticks that are almost a hybrid between a lipstick and a lip gloss. Like they give you really insane shine. They're super pigmented. They have a beautiful amount of gloss and shine to them. So they make your lips look bigger than they are. And they have this like nice cushiony formula. So they almost kind of like glide over the lines on your lips and just make your lips look bigger in that way as well. And it's just one of my favorite formulas by far. So now let's talk lip glosses. Of course, I had to mention the Merit Lip Oils. This is what I'm wearing on my lips right now. This is the shade Cara Cara. This is definitely a little bit of like a newer favorite of mine from the year, but I had to mention it because as soon as I discovered it, I literally bought almost every single shade that they had in their collection because I loved it that much. If you want the look of a gloss, but you don't want stickiness, try these because they are not sticky at all. It, it is a lip oil, so it doesn't have any type of like tack to it. Feels so hydrating and nourishing. It has that kind of oily slip to it instead. Everything about these are so great and I highly recommend them. The Maybelline Lifter Gloss in the shade Crystal has been one of my favorite um, nude lip toppers. So whenever I wanna take a nude lip gloss to the next level and I wanna add a little bit of something extra, but I don't wanna change the color too much, I love using this guy because it kind of just gives like a golden, 
glow and sheen and sparkle to the lips without really changing the color too much, which is exactly what I want, especially when I really like the color of the nude lipstick that I'm wearing. And this really just gives like the perfect amount of sparkle and the perfect amount of warmth to the lips as well. It's so beautiful. The Kaja Honey Drizzle Gloss is one of my favorite kind of like nudie pink glosses. I love wearing this one on its own, um, not so much layered on top of other lipsticks, and it gives a beautiful just nude glossy lip. And everybody needs that perfect nude glossy lip, and this has been my go to this year. Okay, so that's actually everything for all of the makeup. So now let's discuss some other beauty products. So let's start off first, I think with hair care. Okay, one of my number one favorite products that I discovered this year by far has been the Amika Curl Corpse Enhancing Gel as well as the cream. Uh, 2021 was really the year that I finally decided to embrace my natural curls. I have worn my hair curly this year more than I have 15 years. <laughs> so it was definitely a big year for curls for me and that also meant trying to find the products that worked best for me. And I was really on a mission to find just amazing curl products. And very early on in my curl journey, I was actually recommended to try these products by one of my really good friends who was also on a curly hair journey. And she really led me in the right direction because these have been my favorite curl products that I've tried. Um, and even after continuing to try to find other products to top these, I haven't been able to do so because these really just set the bar so, so high. I have an entire routine showing you guys how I actually like to use these products with my curly hair. And I'll link that down below in case you wanna check that out. I pretty much just have not been able to find other creams and gels that work as well as these do in making my hair look the best in its curly form. The Bumble and Bumble Hairdressers Invisible Oil Heat UV Protective Primers and definitely another one of my big favorites from this year. I really like this because it's just such a great all-in-one product that I find is quite effective. It really does make a big difference in my hair. It's a heat protector. It also smooths your hair. It adds some shine. I use this before I blow dry my hair and I actually also use this on my dry hair in case I ever want to restyle it because it almost like reactivates my hair and it will protect it at the same time. There's not much more to say about it. It just works really great. This year, I was also on a hunt for a product that would add some shine to my hair and would keep the shine there. I almost didn't mention this because it is such a recent favorite, but it's so good that I'm almost finished it and I didn't get it that long ago, which is kind of crazy. It is the Orbe Super Shine Moisturizing Cream and I apply this to my hair when it's damp and also when it's dry. I find when I put it in when it's damp, it makes my blowout so much smoother. And when I put it in when it's dry, it adds so much beautiful shine to my hair and it also kind of smooths my hair down as well. A friend of mine who is a hairstylist had told me to use a cream rather than an oil for my hair because it would just kind of be more effective for my hair type. And so that's why I picked up this product. And wow, the difference is huge. I love hair oils, but this cream product works so much better for my hair than a hair oil does. Like I find it really keeps my hair looking really smooth and shiny. Last but not least, let's chat skincare, my top three products. I was trying to think back at what were the products that really made the biggest difference in my skin this year. And one of the ones that really made a huge difference, like every time my skin was feeling really dull and dry, this is the product that I would use. And by the next day, it's like it never happened. The SkinCeuticals Glycolic Brightening Renew Overnight Nightly Treatment is amazing. It has 4% glycolic acid in here, so it does a really great job of just resurfacing and refining the skin. So it, especially if you have a lot of texture, this stuff is awesome. I apply this at night maybe once every two, three weeks. And then when I wake up in the morning, my skin is like noticeably softer, smoother, brighter, and it just makes a huge, 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 huge difference. And it's one of the most effective products that I've used this year. So the Inky List Fulvic Acid Brightening Cleanser kind of does a similar thing for me as this mask, but it's gentle enough to use obviously every single day. This is probably one of my favorite cleansers that I've ever used because it is so effective at actually refining the texture on the face. And I don't know about you guys, but I've never associated cleansers with being able to do something like that. Typically, I find that like that job is meant for either a moisturizer or some type of serum. And I've never thought that like 
a cleanser could actually help me in retexturizing my skin. And this is one of the first cleansers that I've used that actually does that and does it very effectively. Especially when my skin is feeling extra dry, I actually like to massage this onto my face, kind of let it sit for maybe about a minute or so, and then I'll wash it off. And noticeably, my skin is smoother. It's wild. So especially if you have dry skin, I would highly, highly, highly recommend this. And it's also super affordable. Last but not least for the skincare category, I want to talk about my Skin Fix Barrier Plus Lipid peptide cream. This is one of my favorite kind of like thicker, richer moisturizers, especially during this time of year when it's a little bit colder outside. This is one of my go-tos. My skin just really loves this. Um, it's just really, really deeply hydrating and nourishing and I've gone through tubs of this. All right, guys, that's it. Those are all of my top three products from every beauty category from 2021. So now let's get into the little giveaway that I have planned for you guys. So there's gonna be three winners. Um, one winner is going to receive this set from Fresh. Another winner is going to receive this set from Fresh. And then the third winner is going to receive these Charlotte Tilbury goodies that I have in here. If you wanna enter the giveaway, um, I'll have all the details in the description box just so everything's laid out nice and clearly. All right guys, that's it for today's video. I really hope that you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments all of your thoughts on all the products that I mentioned today and let me know some of your favorites from 2021. Hit the thumbs up button if you did enjoy today's video and subscribe if you're not subscribed already and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.